fashion questions episode. You ask them, I answer them. What has been your weirdest experience at a store? I have a few different answers to this and they're all pretty weird. So when I travel for work, like when we're going to fashion week or if we have a project in another country, my biggest priority is I just wanna go to stores. For me, going to fashion stores is kind of like going to a museum where I'm just sort of checking things out. I'm very rarely shopping. The first one is when I went to one of the flagships for Cartier in Paris. And this isn't weird like bad, it's just weird as in weird. I actually like Cartier a lot. When I proposed to my fiance, I was given a Cartier watch from my in-laws, which is like a Lebanese traditional thing. So I was like, I don't really know a lot about Cartier. Let's like go to the flagship store and see what, what it's like there. We were already at Place Vendôme and I was like, oh, we have some time. Let's, let's go to the Cartier flagship. So we walk up and there's a little bit of a line outside. We get into line, no problem. And we're just hanging out and talking. A young man in a porter's cap, like a bellhop at a hotel, comes out of the store, comes up to me and says, English? And I was like, yeah, monolingual. And he was like, very good, sir. There is a line right now. Please wait in this line and we'll be able to be with you in just a moment. Okay. I later found out that's that guy's only job is that he comes outside when there's a line to tell you that there's a line. <laughs> very luxurious. The line moves kind of slowly. We get up to the front of the line and then somebody walks out and then a different person, different from this porter kid, comes out and says, welcome to Cartier. Please come inside and sit down right here. We walk into a room with a really big atrium and there's two desks on either side of the room. We sit at the desk on the left and we are told to wait there. Okay, that's the last time that we see second guy. A woman emerges from the back, sits down and says, welcome to Cartier, how can we help you? I was foolishly assuming that there was just a regular showroom with merchandised products. That is not the case because there's no place in the store where the, the jewelry and the watches are just on display. You have to like say what you want to see. And I don't think, I mean, I do think that that sort of adds to like the luxury experience part of this, but I, I think also it is a loss prevention thing because if you just have a bunch of jewelry that's like sitting out, it makes it way easier to rob you. But if you keep everything locked up in the back and you just bring pieces out a few at a time, that makes it where people are less likely to steal stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. I would love to see a Black Santos and I would love to see a Ballon Bleu that's a uh, mother of pearl for the dial. And I would love to see anything that's like a bracelet that's weirder, something that's a little bit on the more extreme side of bracelets. Again, as always, I'm not really shopping here. I had no intention of buying a $10,000 watch. I was just kind of in there wanting to look around, which they are totally cool with. No one was acting weird about that. This woman said, fantastic, please wait here. She disappears into the back. We wait about seven or eight minutes. She comes back out. You can make your way upstairs. We never see that woman again. That's person number three. Then a very muscly man guides us up these marble steps and into another room on the second floor with another desk where we are told to sit down. Never see that guy again. That's person number four. Person number five emerges. This is another woman who is like, welcome to Cartier. What can I help you with? <laughs> I know that this is like supposed to be like, Oh, such luxury. Like, look at all these people that are waiting on you and stuff. It, it felt a little bit silly. Again, I understand why they do this. Some of it has to do with loss prevention. And some of it has to do with like the appearance of like grand luxury and stuff. But at a certain point it was like, you're the, you're the fifth person to say, welcome to Cartier. How can I help you? Like, can we please like just look at some watches? I told her what I wanted. She then went in the back, got the stuff out and brought it out on like one of those little like mini display cases that jewelers use. And it was really cool. She like talked to us about the different pieces. I talked to her a little bit about my watch. She was like, oh yeah, did you know this and this about your watch and like it was it was very good but yeah that was one of the most like am i awake is this really happening what's going on it was pretty funny i still like cartier a lot obviously there was no negative experience and all of that it was just kind of funny that it's just like wow there's a lot of people here telling me just to hang on a second the other one is a totally different story this happened at the loueve at avenue montagna which is the the huge like shopping street in paris i love loueve obviously and i wanted to try on stuff and so we just went in there and we're poking around and jumping into the dress dressing room and trying stuff on and taking pictures. It was really fun. The staff at Loewe is awesome. I've actually never been to a Loewe store where I had any issues with the staff. There's not a lot of snootiness. Everyone's really friendly. Everyone seems very chill and they're all really willing to talk about the work. That's pretty much all that I look for in stores. So I'm in the dressing room trying on a women's silk shirt, which I still want very badly, but do not have a spare $1,400 laying around. And I could hear that there was some commotion going on outside. Like someone was speaking very loudly out in the main part of the store, but I just didn't worry about it. I continued to try stuff on and was like, oh, this looks so cool. And then we wrapped everything up and we left. The woman that was outside speaking very loudly was speaking in Arabic and my fiance is Lebanese and she was like, oh my gosh, do you know what that woman was saying? She was speaking very loudly and said in Arabic to the store employee that also spoke Arabic, I need to try this on, where is your dressing room? And they 
very kindly explained like there's a gentleman in the dressing room down here we have another one upstairs you can follow me and she said no tell him to leave <laughs> and they were like what i'm not going upstairs tell him he has to leave <laughs> no ma'am um you can wait down here if you'd like if if, if you don't want to like go up the stairs that's totally fine but we need to wait for him to finish in order for you to, to use that dressing room and she was like no tell him to leave and they just sweetly explained that they couldn't do that anyway that was <laughs> that was hilarious because i've never like for how much fashion has like a reputation of like super entitled like snobby people are like just running around demanding stuff from people i i really haven't seen very much of that personally and i again i spend a lot of time in luxury stores i just haven't seen a lot of that happen and this was like the one example of it happening and it was apparently such a rare occurrence in that store that the employees were like you what you want us to do what so anyway the the weird thing that happened to me in that store i wasn't even aware was going on because i am monolingual. Dang, if we were looking for consistent themes or motifs in these weird stories, it would be like, oh, it's that Bliss is monolingual. He only speaks one language. Okay, I'm sitting here editing this and I completely forgot about the actual best experience I've ever had at a store. I don't know why I forgot about this. When I had to get my watch repaired recently, I took it to the local Cartier store, which is much smaller. Um, and I, the staff there is incredible. Everybody there is awesome. So I'm sitting there waiting while they're assessing what actually needs to be done to the watch in the back. And this dude walks in this like scrawny white dude like if you think i'm scrawny very very scrawny white dude walks in in like full sweats and they're all intended to look like balenciaga but it wasn't balenciaga like the the, the shoes were supposed to be triple s's but they're they weren't and like the sweats were supposed to look like yeah and then he was like wearing like a full like ski mask thing and he also did not just have his phone on with music he had a speaker that was strapped to his belt that was playing very, very loud trap music. Music that I like. Totally cool. But he just walks into the store like this and the security guard was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got a couple of things we got to fix here before you come in the store. <laughs> and the security guard was actually really, really good at kind of like keeping everybody cool, keeping everybody calm, because that kid immediately launched into the most high octane explanation. Like he wasn't technically being aggressive, but boy, it sure would have looked like aggression to a lot of people. I have to, I have to play music at all times or else I like, like I have to sleep with it and stuff. Whoa, man, that's totally cool. Listen, I can't let you come in the store if you're gonna have the music playing really loudly. Is there a way that we can make a compromise on that? No. No, there's, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay, fair enough. Is there anything we can do about the ski mask? Because I can't let you come in here with a full face covering. Like, if you want to just wear, like, a COVID mask, I got some in the back, I can go grab it for you, and you can put that on. Can we take the mask off? Oh, yeah, my, my bad, sorry, I, I actually forgot I was wearing it. And he takes the mask off, and he is just, like, drenched in sweat. <laughs> Completely soaked in sweat. <laughs> Dripping. Thanks, man, I appreciate you compromising with me. I can't let you into the store if the music is gonna keep playing, but what I can do is I can go grab you an associate and I can bring him out here and we can talk to you about what you need. Is that fair? Yeah, 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 sure. I'll just, I'll wait out here, that's fine, cool. And then he starts working on some special edition monster energy drink that he brought from home. And the associate was also just cool as a cucumber, very professional about everything. He was like, what can I help you with, man? So I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin millionaire and uh, last year I made about $15 million, which comes out to about $30,000 per day. I'll save you some time on the math. That's not what those numbers come out to. I have 80 I have 86 Rolexes and all of them are like to like di like diamond like they have diamonds all over them and I, I like figured that I like have probably too many Rolexes at this point so I was like looking to get some like Cartier stuff so like what do you guys have that has like diamonds like all over it long story short the the associate was just kind of like I don't think this is maybe what's gonna serve your needs man we don't really have anything like that Cartier does stuff a little bit differently I, I just don't know if we're gonna have like the fully blinged out stuff the way that you want it and then they sent him to the Omega store it, it was actually very Every, everybody at Cartier did an incredible job of diffusing what could have been like a weird situation with like calling security and stuff but they like kept him relatively cool they handled it excellently that kid was one of the funniest people that I have ever seen in public in real life it was so great also okay so many people complain about the outros for these videos 